Welcome everybody to the Canadian Nationals Top 4 for Star Wars Destiny. My name is Steve Castle. I'm casting here with Shaw. Shaw, how are you doing? I'm good. So yeah, uh, my name is Shaheen uh, Shaw Yazdani, also the Royal Falcon, depending on where you look. So yeah, we're here with Top 4, uh, along with Steve, as he mentioned. Apparently I'm not quite awake yet. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so up on our top table here, it is our first seed, Daniel Cassell, who obviously Steve knows well. <laughs> yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, and then as well we have Nicola Jumel. I'm pretty sure I just said his last name wrong, which I've done all all weekend. But anyways, uh, so they are just getting started now. Uh, as you can see, we've actually got uh, two different droid decks. In fact, our entire top four. Is three of the four of them are all droid decks, the fourth being a Doc Afra. Yeah, uh, Nicholas is one of the players from Quebec. I'm not sure exactly where from Quebec, but they brought, uh, brought 14 of the 30 players uh, from Quebec, so they got a lot of strong players out there uh, and put three of them in the top four. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if Dan can uh, keep an English player in or if we're ending up with a top that'll end with two French players. Which I guess if we do, do we grab a French player for commentary? <laughs> we might need to. <laughs> All right, so here they go, rolling out. First rollout's always big. Looks like they tied. <laughs> so it's three. Oh, All right. So we're starting Occupied City. Should also mention, of course, Nicola is running a mill deck, which we had two mill decks out of our 30 players, which was surprising given the recent meta has had no mill whatsoever. Yep, that's true. Uh, Nicholas running a very interesting uh, deck list here with five dice start with uh, Elite 3PO, Elite Yoda, uh, who we all remember, and Young Anakin. Uh, oh, perfect. Getting that, getting that battlefield is a big start. Getting that R2 on turn one is a very big uh, big thing as well. Yeah. C-3PO just got made fully live. That's an amazing opening for him. <laughs> uh, and Dan follows up with his best opening play as well with the Rexus Blaster. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the battlefield to start. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he'll be able to get it later, but yeah, for the moment, not so much. Interesting choice, activating C-3PO as a starting point. I usually expect to see something else in case he wants options, but it did get himself a re double resource. I'm sure he wanted to get up back up to two resources after playing R2 uh, so he can play any of his two cost events that he might have. And there's that free card, Electromagnetic Pulse, absolutely amazing card in the current meta. I mean, any time you can remove a diaper free, right? It was a last-minute addition for Dan. He put those in instead of automated defense, uh, and they've um, come up big for him in this tournament so far. Um, <laughs> looks like a uh, missed opportunity on the occupied city. All right, R2 rolled in and changed himself over to a Disrupt. I'm assuming Dan's plan is to see how much money he can take from Nick or force Nick to play some cards. Yeah, the Disrupt is going to do that. So Dan chose to play the Han droid version. Uh, he anticipated a lot of droids going into this tournament in this meta, and uh, his theory was uh, playing the more aggressive version. The ability to kill a character first would give him an advantage in the droid mirror matches. Wow, Nicolas seems to have had a near perfect opening hand, getting both R2 and the uh, Anakin's pod racer. And immediately showing the discard side. Yep. And EMP has already been used. Dan's going to wish he had that pulse back now. Very much. <laughs> he does have two. He could have had the other one in hand, but apparently not. Oh, hand solo for all the money. On Ouch. It. And no money. Easy picking. Such a strong card. Mm -hmm. 
and resolves the focus I'm expecting. Yep. Yep, most likely resolve the focus for two to get it off that disrupt side that he doesn't need yep. anymore. For resources and leaving the plus money? Nope. No, Base there was that. Or play, plus yeah. And the resources. Yep. Faithful Companions is such a good card. <laughs> Dan expecting the discard? <laughs> Hidden motive, good hit. And the second hit due to Anakin on the board. Chewie's blaster. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Kept the one he needed. <laughs> Remembers the occupied city this time. Yep. Dan with all three of his. Uh, big money upgrades that he's looking for. Uh, the DX tech card that he added in, uh, expecting a lot of shields in the meta as a reaction to the Ewoks. As well as the random Raylos that keep showing up. Although he did only have two out of 30. And he gets on the board with two damage. Very nice. Although speaking of the Ewoks, we also we did not have that big a group of Ewoks. Just like Euros, it dropped out as well. I believe there's two Ewok decks yesterday. I have to go back and look, but that sounds about right. Two, maybe three. Nicola is set up for all the more money again. I'm assuming Dan is just about out of options with no cards in hand, everything tapped out. Yep, so he will uh, gain the battlefield control going into the second turn. Uh, definitely not an optimal start for Dan, but he was able to develop his board. Uh, with a couple of good upgrades and will set himself up to draw an action sheet card yep. and maybe spike some damage. Yeah, yeah. And if nothing else, at least Occupied City won't affect him next week, next round. Oh, Ooh, a Vandalize for the Rex's Blaster. Yeah, this is definitely round one has been Nikola's game. <laughs> and there's the Occupied City hitting Nikola himself. <laughs> because of having to play the resistance ring. <laughs> Dan played a lot of Yoda Leia in the last meta and is not going to miss those occupied cities very often. For sure. And of course, since the resistance ring was played, it also milled one card off Dan's deck as well. Well, as of yet, I don't think Nicola has any targets for the resistance ring in his grave. Or discard. He actually doesn't have very many targets in the deck for the resistance ring. That's true. You tend not to. It's usually things like field have, medic. He does have the field medics. And the no answers. And the no answers, yeah. He also has a single copy of men, so he does have five targets, uh, but isn't going to see those very early very often. Well, and it looks like Han Solo was the first thing in for Dan. On that's a two range and a discard side. Yeah, discard. Pacifying the two range. That's a good play for sure. Dan's gonna get loaded up on shields that he has no use for. Second DX. I love that con love that conceptually. R2, a character with no hands, is now carrying two guns. <laughs> so we don't know yet if Dan has an Ewok ambush or a droid stay out in his hand, but he's going to be looking to uh, roll in both his droids, show two base damage sides after turning, and then resolving both of those two base damage sides at three to spike off C-3PO. For sure. Which is why we've seen C-3PO already come in. Resolve, get two resources so that Nikola has options. Yep. And representing no act, ambush action, cheats. Yeah. Just got to go there legitimately. However, that is a two and a plus two with an R2 ability still to go. Makes sense, going for the base two there. And two damage, do you expect? Uh, yeah. yeah. That is a lot of damage sitting. He's got to expect removal here, for sure. The Beguile. 
Alright, what does he hit first? <laughs> One of the guns comes back at plus. So that Han Solo dies likely the next target. Or a target in the structure. <clears throat> if you were to blank, blank the Han Solo, remove the R2, or vice versa. Probably vice versa, just to get rid of the guns, yeah. keep mismatch damage, as he just did. Hoping for the focus. Need what she got, nice. Very nice. And we're back where we were, almost. But Nicola's got lots of cards left, so I expect he's got more removal. Three cards left. You play two removal cards. The amount of time he's taking, it, not an easy removal. Uh, I can see a refusal in his hand. And there it is. Yep. I believe that only targets character dice. Uh, yes. So it takes the two damage that R2 has down to two resources, which is still not a bad thing for Dan. No. However, four damage into C-3PO. Yeah, so he will not be killing the 3PO this turn. No. So if I recall correctly, he's not running any supports, so he can't pull out random damage. But while they think, I'm assuming, Steve, you've spent a fair bit of time with Dan practicing and testing for this event? Oh, we spent a lot of time testing. Absolutely. And uh, Dan has been on droids uh, for most of that time. Uh, he was running chopper droids uh, for a long time. And uh, like I said earlier, uh, we felt that there would be a lot of droids and that Han would give him the best opportunity to uh, kill a character first in the mirror match. Makes sense. So that's how he teched his deck. And it was a good setup because we've seen it already. All right, so Nicola has gotten a scruffy play. Not sure what he called, but we'll find out as soon as he pulls. Looks like upgrade called. Okay. And of course, he's also sitting on a blank pod racer with a focus on 3PO, so he has a lot of potential coming. But I believe we did see a hidden motive sitting in Dan's hand, so I expect Nicola will slow play a bit here. And yeah, now it's just about how many cards can Nicholas get out of Dan this turn. And he will most likely get all of them out of his hand, and then we'll see how many he can get off the top. For sure. And of course Anakin came in, rolled a blank unfortunately, but he was able to still turn the pod racer. Pod racer, not a great hidden motive target. Really not, but still gonna try. <laughs> I'm assuming he didn't call resource. <laughs> he likely would have called the discard just to at least not get the face. Ooh, Yoda on double special. And Dan's running easy pickings and flee the scene, but it doesn't look like we'll see either one. It seems Dan passed. Well, what's left in his hand is upgrades based on the scruffy play. When the hand was passed across, I believe the hidden motive was the only event. I think I saw an instigate. Oh, possibly. Maybe I missed that. There's R2 fixing Anakin Skywalker again, or Anakin's pod racer. I believe Dan indicated the claim. Yep, likely. And watch his hand disappear. So taking one with the resolution, and now the Anakin upgrade on the pod racer. Will be from the top of deck. Okay. Focus Anakin to get another discard from hand, I'm assuming, since he left the card. Yep. The chat's questioning the 3PO first uh, target for Dan. Uh, we talked about it last night. It's a little difficult who to go for. I think Yoda is a great choice. Uh, I think that with the R2 down first, on the first turn, uh, the 3PO is a good choice as well. I know that Nicholas uh, was always very upset when his 3PO uh, was killed. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. If the R2 wasn't there, then Yoda for sure. But since it hit the board and you can't touch R2, or not easily, would make, I agree completely. 
as well as it was also a good te test to see if there was a field, um, field medic or... Uh, Thinking of first aid. Thank you. First aid in hand or not. He doesn't have first aid in the deck list. True. However, Dan doesn't know that. That's true. A second resistance ring. That should cause both of them to mill. And there and goes a field a, medic. Puts a red card in the graveyard. Yeah. I mean, it's one less play of the field medic, but now with two resistant rings, it's probably going to get played later. Oh. That occupied city is hitting Nicholas hard. However, milling in the other copy of R2, not really a big deal. All right, and they reset for turn three. Dan's really going to want to see an Ewok ambush or a droid stay out here. For sure. Also realizing Dan's not running Convergence, so he has no way to remove that R2. So, there's a question in stream about reviewing of deck lists. Uh, we discussed this as a group, players and judge. Uh, it was deemed that we would not review each other's deck lists until after the matches. However, the decks, of course, were checked before every match started today. Dan finds his second Rex's blaster and immediately has it taken off the table. And it looks like there's the droids stay out. Yep. Yep. Now he still has the refusal on R2. So, although turning R2 to the 2 damage at least gets him 2 money instead of 1. However, it goes for the base damage instead. I'm assuming Dan here is thinking about where to use Fateful and where to use C-3PO. I feel like I would Fateful the plus two to a base two. So you can just resolve. Uh, well, you would only resolve one in that case. He only you? gets to resolve yeah. one in that case. I think you're probably right. Um, this is his chance to do his damage, and you've got to think that Nicholas has a handful of mitigation. I think I see an easy pickings on the front of his hand, actually. Yes. <laughs> Going for the focus. But at least he does take 3PO out of the game. Very important kill. Let's see if it was too late or not. Yeah. Just given how much is sitting on Yoda at this point. Well, that does not look like a great roll for Yoda. Only special hit was the force jump. And easy pickings of himself, both those Yoda dice. That is great value there. For sure. Pod racers in, but only on a shield. Assuming Dan's next roll will be next action will be a hand solo. Even I believe he only has one card left in his hand. Oh, two cards, my bad. Two cards and Nicholas has no resources right now, so he won't be able to play that easy pick as we can see. Dan going with the instigate to try to sneak in the damage. Smart play, I think, because he knows he's going to lose that card. Well, he's got the plus two there as well to resolve one. <coughs> that worked out nicely. And going for Yoda. Yep, four damage in. Great play. <clears throat> I think Yoda is also the right target to go for there. Uh, if he can take him off the board, Dan will, will be in a good position. Uh, to win this game. I agree completely. Just taking those three upgrades as well as the elite die out compared to Anakin who's a softer target but only one die. Admittedly he helps the pod racer but overall not as strong. Dan can also expect to start the next turn with another ambush card. He's running six of them uh, to get some more uh, cheat damage in uh, especially with those DX blasters going through any shields that he would be able to put onto Yoda before the end of the turn. Yeah. Although, as of yet, Nicola hasn't been putting down really any shields. 
And both his Yoda dice are gone. True. There's a discard face from Anakin. Now, will he remember to turn something with Anakin, or will he be happy with the shield? Turns R2 for a resource. Interesting. He will be able to pair that up with his modified resource side he's showing right now. That's true. And he doesn't need... Dan only has one card left, so he doesn't need the pod racer on discard On the discard, side. as he takes it with Anakin. We're just going to move the battle out of the three. There we go. So, field, field medic. medic. Although every card is important when playing against Mill, it's not a card Dan was going to use for anything more than a reroll. For reference, Nicola only has one Ninum, so choosing to discard it is kind of interesting. As it's quite a powerful card. Very powerful card, not one you normally see in a mill deck. Um, True. But I can see it being um, clearly very versatile and very useful to turn his own dice. Uh, to the side that he needs. Oh, actually, the comments just made an interesting point. Because Field Medic hit Dan's discard, the uh, Resistance Rings can now target Field Medic in either discard. Can they? I believe the Resistance Ring doesn't specify which uh, discard mm -hmm. pile. We'll just confirm that right here. Any discard pile. Yeah. So that's two Field Medics. As I mean, as well as he could, in theory, trigger the droids day out, it just wouldn't do very much. <laughs> There's all the resources as you predicted. Dan lost the claim, which is going to be very relevant, I think. Agreed. Oh, and Nick. I believe another scruffy in the hand. He's able to scruffy for a vent. What I find interesting here is Nicola chose to discard his Lore Hunter, which again, I believe he's only running one copy of, although I suppose at this point Dan's deck is very thin, so it wouldn't have done very much. Yeah, three cards, so yeah, would not have done very much. Yeah, we'll look through the graveyard. Yep. Noting Nicola only runs one Flames of the Past, which he's already played. So he's just now looking to see what Dan may have left. I just personally, when I'm playing, I half expect that to be a Flames of the Past check. There's the Scruffy. Yep. Oh. There's I believe I see two Ewok ambushes in there. It's actually a really good hand. You've also got EMPs. Dan's oh. protected. What will Nicola remove? Ewok ambush, as you expected. Chewie's Blaster, such a powerful card. And Dan dealing the damage to himself required to remove Refusal. Very heads up play there. That is an awesome play. I actually forgot Chewie's Blaster had that effect. I mean, I half expected Dan just to attack himself in order to fix it. Because I've seen that in some other events. Again, no Yoda specials, but one is on two focus. And the Resistance Ring special will let him play a Field Medic out of the graveyard. Yep. Uh, with four resources showing. Oh, and Nikola has an Entangle in hand. I saw it flip by, as well as an Easy Pickings and a Mend. And a No Answer. Oh. Which, if he can time that perfectly to get Dan's last card, he will also get the three up that he has left in his deck. Yeah, that could be the end game call. Although Yoda is at half life. So I expect Nicola will try and heal at some point. Well, he's better. He better do it quick, because Dan's gonna you walk ambush that R two in. Yep. And with the ambush action, roll in three PO, which will almost guarantee a kill. 
although depending on what our two rolls on those faces, he could just resolve just an ambush. There. Another missed opportunity on the occupied city. That being said, it shouldn't matter. There's the field medic play off of the resistance ring special. So that means Dan needs to put seven damage in it as a burst to get Yoda instead of five. Dan gonna increase his chances of hitting that seven by rolling in Han first. Will the easy pickings hit two ones? It will. And there's the ambush. Oh, and that is not what Dan was looking for. Not at all. There's the R2 effect. For the three for one, I believe. That's a four for one. Four for one, thank you. And Faithful Companion. And then 3PO. Trooper resolves the 4 for 1 as a 5. So, 8 damage onto Yoda, which is not going to be enough. Nope. However, if Nicola does not take away that other damage face, Daniel will kill Yoda next on the next activation. All right, yes, he is showing shield, but we know that blaster goes right through those shields. Correct. Entangle. Entangle. Removing both blasters. Makes sense. Just take the damage off the table. All right, so we're back to Dan, I believe. Or did he pass and I missed it? Must have passed. Damage on R2, that'll help the mill player a lot, right? <laughs> So Nicola just needs one discard face, and he should have this game. He should. The R2 special and the Yoda on double focus. He should get there. Although I wonder if Dan will see the no answer coming and just simply discard a card. That's tough. Mind you, then Yoda's could potentially still take his deck. Not a lot of people. That's true. Yoda's and the pod racer could just take the deck anyway. <laughs> Not a lot of people can see that no answer play. And oh, he just opened up the no answer play. He did. That being said, the electromagnetic pulse is still a great card to play, especially as your lip make. His current view, I expect, is he was trying to get Nicola to have to reroll. And Nicola goes for resources. Oh, I suppose he didn't have the resources for the no answer. Now he does. That's That'll do it. Game one. Now they'll reset for game two. So Nicholas showing exactly what his deck is designed to do. Uh, missed a few occupied cities, but other than that, uh, played a pretty textbook game. And it looks like players have mulliganed, and we're ready to start the second game. They walk ambush to start it out. Looks like Dan wants to start with the double disrupt play. <laughs> All right, so I'm back, and for those who are interested, the other table had been Michel Beaumont and Nicolas Beaufort, and Nicolas won. So that's Doc Afra going into the finals. 
So at least we won't have a droid mirror. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Michelle was playing a unique version of droids yesterday. Uh, also running Anakin, uh, and he was running all of the big droid supports, the LR-7 combat droid, the Hellfire droid tank. Uh, he even had the GH-7 droid and the Coruscant police and Mr. Bones in there, uh, and went with the uh, just very, very aggressive version that did the things that droid does by rolling out R2 and 3PO and resolving your dice quickly to get resources then play a big droid, and then use Anakin to, tr to turn one of those big droids dice to the sides he wanted. He beat me in the top eight with that deck, so I'm uh, very, very well versed with the stuff that he does to win games. All right, of course there we've got Dan's now fully rolled out, and an EMP just hit C-3PO's dive. Oh, discarding an easy pickings for that reroll. And wow, However, what a reroll. Yeah, that's six damage showing, all free. Does Nicola have an easy picking? <laughs> Does not. But again, opening the R2 in his first in his opening hand, that's amazing. And we'll now, never know who if Dan would have still gone for 3PO without that R2 being played. But once it's there, good choice. R2 getting fixed, of course, by Anakin. Over to resources. Oh, Dan, with an excellent Flee mean scene. streets off of Flee the Scene. Uh, that's why Dan chose to run the mean streets over the Con Tower or some of the other battlefields. Uh, this droid deck is very fast and would often unload a lot of damage before you can react and then end the turn by claiming to play a flee the scene or an easy pickings uh, or even a mend or a field medic uh, for sure. set himself up for the next turn. So this game going a lot better for Dan than the last one. Especially with Nicola also not having a great role there. Although at least with the R2 on table, that C-3PO can trigger twice. which was the quick discussion they're having there. All right, so where are we at at this point? Dan just electromagnetic pulsed the R2 dice, got it off the board. Just in time so Anakin has no targets, that's great. 
Dan with all the control cards this round. Oh, Yoda's starting to get loaded up like last game. Two damage, I assume, into Yoda. One Yoda special, that's all you need. Dan with the claim. So let's see how Nicholas can finish out this turn. Still got three dice in play, a couple of cards. No resources, though. Vandalize into a reroll. Okay. Interesting. With only three character dice left, no good vandalized targets for himself. Yoda spot? No. He just wants the shields, so... That's fair. Yoda to mill one. And I assume, I assume turn a die? Or will he just gain the resource straight? Gains a shield. He wants the shield. Noting, of course, that the card that got milled off of Yoda was a hasty exit, which would have been a great card for Dan since he's been controlling the battlefield this whole time. Only removes damage dice. Oh, true. So, disregard. Uh, the Rex's Blaster, however, is a great card for Dan here. Agreed. And with that card, if Dan has another one of his action cheats, which we've seen, we've seen two droids day out in Ewok ambush so far, but he still has those two instigates left. He's able to play one of those. That'll let him roll out R2 and Han and 3PO. I'm expecting that's what Nicola was checking to see if they were still available. Nicola showing another scruffy in his hand to us. And there it's played. Looking for events, I expect. Those are still good events, but not the ones he was expecting. Yeah, Dan's hand, I think you want to take the flee of the scene because of the battlefield and what it's capable of. I mean, it and the easy pickings both take two, two dice. And the easy pickings would take Yoda away on a random roll. So I expect that's where Nicola went. Although I do agree, they're both very dangerous cards in this case. And then Rex. Dan indicating the order of his triggers. So now we get the R2 trigger. For money? Okay. Fateful. I'm assuming C3PO and Fateful for two money, three damage? That is a very fair assumption. Uh, looks like Dan wants to get that Chewie's Blaster down on the Han. Yep, there's the damage. Interesting stuff. I think Dan will be looking to disrupt that one resource and clear the way for his Han as best he can. Although here comes Yoda. There's two specials. That easy pickings would have been great. Although one of them is admittedly a force jump. Force jump is very powerful here. For sure. Dan not having any more action sheets. Dan just going to flee. He pays for the flee of the scene. I like that play. Yep. Uh, Especially as it's early enough that Nicola is unlikely to just do an action and then and claim to force an end. No, Nicholas still has way, way too much that he still wants to do yep. on this turn. And if he does pass out, it will let Dan start the next round with the battlefield. Well, he could technically claim, and then at least Nicholas starts. He would, but then Dan would be able to finish. At least with finish with Han. True. But the resistance ring is down now. They remember the mill. 
your players be All right, so I believe that was, that was the first action. Dan passes, and we're still on Nicola. <laughs> Removes a resource. And then passes out. Didn't want to face the Han roll in. Interesting. Let's see how Dan na navigates this turn. He does have a lot of damage potential already on the table. We're... And there's the instigate. So he'll start with the Han. See what comes up here. Han showing much better than he did the last rollout. Yep, we're looking at a one and a plus three. Dan, oh, one of Dan's favorite plays is the double action cheat. Wow, instigate into so an ambush. This, this will allow him to roll in R2, roll in 3PO, turn a dice with R2, resolve two different dice at plus one damage, and then have an additional action to resolve any remaining dice he has. Yep, this is definitely an ideal turn for Dan. Especially also Rex is on damage as well. So there's 3PO for more, da uh, sorry, R2 to get more damage. What's the biggest damage that he can so get with 3PO? Is, this is a dead Yoda for sure. I think that what Dan would want to do is resolve that R2 for two, resolve one of the range dice for three, or an additional one, and then use his ambush action to resolve the rest of his range dice. I agree completely. So there's two. Oh, and he resolved for resources. Dan wants the resources. Uh, remember, he still has that Chewie's blaster in his hand. Of course. And either way, he could use the ambush to get the kill. Very nicely played by Dan. I agree. Yeah. Of course. And now is he resolving that Rex's blaster dice? He may be leaving it in case when he plays the Chewie, it comes up as a plus. Chewie has no modified oh. sides, but you never know what Dan's got going on. Very sneaky. Or maybe he left it just to drag something out of Nicola's hand. There's the Chewie as you expected. Point of damage to roll it in. On disrupt. It's like leaving the Rex's blaster out was just a slight misplay from Dan. Quite possibly. And there's the discard face, of course with a hidden motive and something left else left in Dan's hand. <clears throat> Dan thinking about a re-roll on the Chewie's blaster here, I'm sure. Oh, instigate's gone. Waiting to see what got discarded before he chose to re-roll yeah. that he would have claimed. Yeah, because if he could have kept the, the instigate. Yeah. If he could have kept the instigate for the next round, he probably would have. However, that reroll into base dam into base and free damage is great to see. <clears throat> Looking at the removal in Nicholas's hand, the guile and tangle, easy pickings, seeing no answer in there. No good options for removing just a single dice. No. I don't think he has much choice at this point in the game. He claims. Heads up play, claiming the battlefield to play the the event that he's going to choose. For the Beguile, the only the only one he could play to do something. Well, I suppose he could have played the Entangle. Still holding the Entangle. Still has five cards in his hand. Nicholas was not able to do very much that round. No. At some point, he'll remember to reset his table as well. <laughs> I think he's thinking of, uh, of discards. Discarding. Yeah. However, that that hand is still a very good hand. In fact, there's a second beguile in it. 
course, that's the one side he didn't want to see on R2, but Anakin will fix that. Coming in, big damage. Also discarding money. Nicholas in a very, very tough position right now. I see he does have a pacify in his hand, which will be helpful. If he has targets for it, depending on how C-3PO triggers. As we do have the Rexus Blast there to get C-3PO out with R2. He doesn't have the battlefield right now. Oh, true. So he won't be able to do that. Very true. Uh, Dan also can turn that Han dice from a resource to a range side with his power action. And a Beguile play in the opening. All right. Rerolls the resource to damage. That's... Making it easy for Dan. And blank and gone. All right. Free damage on the blaster. Not enough for Dan. Nope, he does have the resources. Pushing for all the damage. Also making sure to avoid any easy picking targets or the entangle, for that matter. Both the guiles gone now. There's that pacify. And this is going to be most likely a five damage Chewie's blaster off of the 3PO. Yep, very likely. Hard to pass that up. I would expect Dan will be hoping C three will also come out as focus just to push more damage. <laughs> or, you know, put a cannon on C three PO. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Nicola has got two resources coming his way. That'll let him at least play out his hand. And the five damage like you expected. I do appreciate Nicola's dedication to the game that he's still playing and not just scooping for game three at this point. He's playing it out, trying to see what Dan can do, get all that last little bit of info for the third game. Can't be the champ scooping early. Nope. Oh, then again. <laughs> all right, into game three. All right, exciting game three, starting with the Scruffy. I'm sure this time he will call upgrade. <laughs> Completely agree. Oh, but there is a droid stay out there. And an EMP. And an instigate. Oh. A handheld <laughs> cannon and the DX. And he's looking at the events. We keep all the event there. Nope, it was the upgrades. There goes the handheld. Although he still has one upgrade left, I believe. And then all the action cheating. Yep, unblockable damage. And he remembered the occupied city this time. And hit a Chewie's blaster. Dan choosing to wait on his droids stay out, uh, which I think is very smart. Get the Honda Sand have a much higher chance of showing the sides that you want to be resolving, leaving those Hondas open to mitigation. Although thankfully they didn't come up as the same side, so they're safe from things like easy pickings, which we keep seeing flash through Nicola's hand. Of course, there's the droids stay out. And let's see what Dan can do with this. Number of different damage faces. And of course there's the R2 trigger for R2 trigger first. Interesting. Looks like Dan uh trying to extract maximum value here uh and playing for a bit of a longer game. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Use the 
uh, one melee damage he has as opposed to the range in case he comes up with pluses later for whatever reason. Five damage to three PO. Oh, Ouch. easy pickings on the resources. Dan walked himself into that one, unfortunately, yep. and showing that he doesn't care if R2's on the board, he's going to go for 3PO first every time. Yeah, which I find interesting, because at this point I might have considered one of the other two. Well, what am I saying? I might have considered Yoda. I never would have considered Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> Although 3PO is now two damage away. But Dan is also tapped out. Resource and shield. <clears throat> Resource and shield. Expect the same thing over again then? I suppose. He's hesitating now. Uh, I believe Dan is going to be setting up next turn to roll in that R2 quickly. Shield and, in a turn. And, or resource in a turn. And go right through those shields. Now, unfortunately for Dan, we can see a mend in his opponent's hand. He paid to trigger 3PO. Putting both Dan's cards. Yep. Of course, Dan claims. There's the mend. At least thematically, the mend makes more sense than the first than the first aid or field medic, since it is repairing visually repairing a robot arm. Yeah, so I always feel weird when I personally when I've played droids and field medic or first aid on three PO. <laughs> Discarding flames to get a reroll, hoping for that resource, but no. Trying again with a beguile. Wow. How does that work? He really wanted that resource and he does hit it. Yep. You guys gonna be like... Into the second turn. Not an ideal for start for Dan, uh, but not bad either. Did also, get some damage down. Nicola hasn't had that great a start either. They're both much slower in this game than the last two. There's a resistance ring in Nicola's hand. But that will cause them both to mill one. And of course, a field medic. So 3PO is basically going to be healthy again. Dan's got all the unblockable damage. So also, of course, a no answer in Nicola's hand. But there's the field medic just to get it done. So we'll do the other side of the bracket. And I don't know who won those games, but I know it's a safe play. Agreed. They were both. They were both. Hand comes out on all different sides, but some reasonable damage. Very good rollout for Han. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling Annie first. All those dice out. Interesting. Very interesting. Didn't save it to be able to fix C three PO. I mean, also telegraphs that he doesn't have the pod racer. Yes, not sure uh, exactly what Nicholas is looking for there. Maybe uh, wants a third resource so he can play a resistance ring. Quite possible. Uh, and still have the two resources open for mitigation. And I'm sure would like to cast an Ewok ambush here if he had it. However, that's three damage? Four damage? Three damage right there. So that's still a good thing to put in. And both his droids back. So as much as getting that damage in was good, it does mean if the other blaster comes up as a plus, it won't initially be functional. Of course, 3PO can fix that, but, well, R2 can fix that, and potentially 3PO on a focus side. Paying one for 3PO's full effect to get two shields. Yep. 
Interesting. R2 immediately used on the blaster. Switching to the, the, plus, the plus, plus side. Which no, don't, don't put it on top. It's an interesting assumption. <clears throat> interesting assumption. Uh, I think a little bit greedy for Dan. It looks like Dan wants to power action Han into the base two and go right through all three of those shields. Yep. Sometimes you got to take big risks, make big plays to win big games. Although, I mean, also has showing two damage with three with R2, which so he's just pushing. I don't know that I've seen any removal in his hand. For Nicola, not much. The closest I've seen is Clever Distraction, yep. which I believe only removes a trooper dice. And there's power action, like you said. Is that the one side they didn't switch it yeah. to? I don't think he wants to switch it to the one side. I mean, I guess it gets it done. It's enough damage. It's not, though. Is it not? Is it a plus two only on the blaster? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so he leaves 3 people at 1. Oh, that is a fair point from the comments, because it would have been a 2 and a plus 2, Pickings would have hit them. Pickings would have hit them. However, we know it's not there, but Dan already, playing the smart play. He had already cast an easy Pickens. I mean, we have perfect information, but I think that Dan needed to be a little bit greedier there. Yep. Which is funny, because you said he was being too greedy a moment ago when he left the plus two. <laughs> it's a careful balance. For sure. the right amount of greedy. For sure. Oh, and he put the melee damage from R2 into Yoda. Makes sense. He's going to be planning to... Um, Push some unblockable into 3PO next round. That's right. Now, of course, Yoda does have one special, and I believe a discard, in fact. So there's a the special resource. Makes sense. And top card. Which is an instigate. So that's some of the cheating gone. Does it ever feel weird to you to call these things cheating when they're not cheating in the game? Feels like cheating. For sure. More money for Nicola. I assume at this point he's just trying to set up for the next round. Yeah, very slow start for Nicholas in terms of uh, milling cards out of Dan's deck. No, he just... no Anakin's pod racer, really slow to close things down there. As well as no R2. He's missing a lot of his pieces. I'm assuming at this point means Dan has claimed and is just waiting to see if Nicola takes his hand. Oh, no, I was playing. Yeah. Well, oh, I was slightly ahead. Card, hasty exit. Dead card. Oh, Dan. Another one off the top. There's a resistance ring. And an occupied city, so they both lose one. Another hasty. Yeah, but more no, importantly, more off the top. Nicola lost uh, a beguile there, too. Ah, very important. EMP gone from Dan. That's a good Dan card. Dan lost four pretty irrelevant cards. Right shield, <laughs> two hasties, and the electromagnetic pulse. Well, the EMP has some relevance with C-3PO there. Not as much because he doesn't have the supports, that's true. <laughs> oh, let's have a look at Nicola's hand. <clears throat> Anakin's pod racer is there. Let's see how Dan starts out this as well turn. He's going to start out with an Ewok ambush and just end 3PO right now. Yep. Best not to take any chances. Using R2 to make sure. Faithful just to get more damage. Yep. 
Yeah, what would you do? I'm not sure the 3PO was needed there. Uh, the 3PO was not needed. So he could have just resolved the die, save 3PO for the next step. He could have resolved the die and just uh, save the 3PO for after he rolled out Han. That's yeah. true. Pacify? It can sometimes be difficult when you have a plan with your deck and you play it a certain way all day long. Uh, it can be very difficult to make those minor adjustments uh, when they matter most. For sure. However, Chewie's Blaster is out on base damage. No Yoda special, but a jump special. Get that die out of the way before it can be hit. I mean, Dan is still looking like he's in a good position here. Although, you are also seeing the stress of the game getting to him a bit. Oh. There's the pod racer. That'll help Nicola out. On the disrupt, so Anakin's going to be turning that. That is not a great roll for Han. Only one damage showing. And technically an easy pickings target on both hand dice. <laughs> Force jump. Nicholas flashing us that easy pickings yep. to refer to. However, back on the special. he does not currently have any resources. Dan re-rolling everything. For reference, Dan discarded that riot shield because it's so important. <laughs> Force jump again, but this time not back to special. He's only getting one damage die, but two resources in hand. And only one card. We know his opponent has no answer in his hand, but no money at the time. Yeah. Uh, Nicola could really use some resources right now. <laughs> Switching to the shields. Dan likely to discard that last card now since he's destined to lose it anyway. Yep, especially while Nicola still has no resources. Oh, power action. So that's not enough to kill Yoda. I feel if Nicola really wants those shields, he should be gaining three of them right now. Right, two off of. I think you definitely want to resolve that pod racer dice to get the last card. That too. Oh, he went top of deck instead. That I did not exp I guess he's trying to maximize that no answer. He does still have the no answer, which is smart as well. I feel Dan should resolve that damage, since his card is still safe from no answer with no resources showing on Nicola's side. Yeah. Two unblockable. Now Dan switching the other two to Anakin so he can hopefully uh, penetrate those shields on the next turn. Makes perfect sense. He's got two unblockable dice there. Reroll from Nicola. There are some specials. However, no Yoda specials. This is Dan checking to see what the resistance ring can hit. Is Dan going to be able to anticipate that no answer? I'm unsure. He's right now concerned about the field medic that the ring will bring in. However, again, Nicola has no resources. 
I believe Dan has a easy pickings in his hand. Right, could take both specials. However, then he's unable to reroll for damage. Oh, it's a flea. That's a lot of damage. Of course, the jump. It's one damage out of it, which is pretty good, considering that force speed was on special. Force jump. Force jump. Well, that's been three force jumps this round? Yes. There's the resource. Dan will not get no answer this turn. I'm assuming Dan will claim at this point, as there's nothing left to do. Discarding the no answer for a reroll. Looks like Dan has about 11 cards left in his deck. Yo, to special. And a shield, since Nicholas seems to love those shields. Dan. Dan. Top deck with Yoda. Field medic, great for Dan. Actually, great for Nicola as well. Gives him a target. So both Yodas have milled one. First one also turned to Yoda. Second effect will be a shield. Well, and there's the field medic from the grave. I feel though Dan is in a stronger position than Nicola, but that they both have a possibility of winning still. They both have a, a very good possibility of winning right now. This game is very close. Uh, a lot comes out to uh, Dan's first action on this turn. Five cards are left in Dan's deck. All right, so hand came out. Lots of damage. Nicola has that easy pickings. <laughs> Surprised he's even considering other options. Uh, if he does use that easy pickings as this action, Yoda will die when Dan rolls out. Oh, oh the fours. Uh, takes the unblockable, takes Han. Oh, the Rex's blaster's there. My bad. I did not catch that. Still does it. You walk ambush. Very nice. Yep. Again, Dan motioning for his order of events. There's the Rex resolved. Starting with R2. Has to get that unblockable damage. Interesting. Fateful for more damage. And then resolving that with 3PO. Leaving Anakin at two, and now his ambush action will be six unblockable to take out the Yoda. And that's what Dan has been doing to people all weekend long. Uh, 
So I think at this point Dan probably has it, given only two damage to go on Anakin. Although he is mostly tapped out, he can reroll and get up to four. Oh, in fact, he has a power action. He does have the power action. Uh, Nicholas would have to survive this turn. Um, but if they go into one more round, uh, I don't think Nicholas has any chance. Discard at least. Power action to two. Does Nicholas still have a removal card he can play? I he has a Neiman Mastery is his option here. Uh, doesn't it require a blue? And he doesn't have any options here. That's game. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We will be back shortly with the finals.